Hello. Hello, hello. Let me make sure I'm not going to just blast. Okay. I'm sure I'm on mute. <laughs> but it does seem like everything is working today, as long as I don't bump the table. Stop shaking. <laughs> All right. Good evening, everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and tonight we are going to unbox the April 2021 Paradise Fibers Fiber of the Month Club bag. I am really excited. This is a really fun mystery subscription of unspun fiber and all kinds of goodies. Um, but I have to say, I, I avoid spoilers as much as I possibly can. But it's fun to like look at the packaging and see if there's any like things that we can guess. And so we've got some bunnies on here. So could we have like some Angora in here maybe? I don't know. Certainly that wouldn't surprise me. But of course it could be in a completely different direction. We've had rose fiber and pineapple fiber in the past. Uh, the Paradise Fibers team is really creative when it comes to curating a theme around their beautiful unspun fiber. So I am very, very excited to unbox and share this with all of you. Making sure I can see, why is it not scrolling for me? Okay, I cannot see. But if you would like to learn more about the Fiber of the Month Club, I do have my affiliate link pinned in the chat. Uh, I am a Paradise Fibers affiliate, which means I do earn commission if you sign up or make purchases on their website after clicking on my link. And they do send this to me for free for me to unbox and share. But I think if you've been watching me for a while, you know by now that these are really, really fun to open up and unbox. And uh, I hope that we will all enjoy the experience. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh thanks. Um, <laughs> I forgot that I had this on. I was like, ooh, spring, I need to be in theme. Uh, if it was earlier then maybe, well, I don't think I have good enough Wi-Fi to do this out by my Forsythias um, where I took the thumbnail photo. So uh, I wanted to try and be like on theme, on theme, best I could at least. Uh, let me see. So I am going to pop over here just to, as I, nope, nope, <laughs> awkwardly try to share information. Uh, so the Fiber of the Month Club is $34.99 a month, and that includes six to eight ounces of unspun fiber, and there's fun extras. There is almost always a vinyl sticker of the uh, sheep mascot Eunice in a various themed pun kind of way, which is delightful, uh, and it is a lot of fun. So as I said, it's $34.99 if you're in the continental U.S., and then if you are a little further away in Alaska or Hawaii, um, Canada, or in the U.K. or in Europe, it's a little more expensive to accommodate the additional shipping charges. And so it does include, the price you see in U.S. dollars does include the price of shipping. And if your country is not listed, you can always email or DM Paradise Fibers on their Instagram account to see if there are options so that way they could ship to you where you are. Haha, -ha, everything is working. It's awesome when everything is working. All right, let's open this up and see what our theme is. The sticker is fun this month. Ooh. I think in the, I can't tell if there's a scent. It smells slightly sweet. There can be scents in here, but you can request an unscented box. Um, the There was, I think one month because of the pandemic that there may not have been a sticker. Ooh, ah! <laughs> look at the little bunny extra. <gasps> Okay, spoiler, I just got a spoiler, and no, I didn't know that that was gonna be in there. Ooh, ooh, I am excited. Ha <laughs> ha, all right, the theme of the month. 
his sweet speckles. So do I don't know if I spell anything. Okay, so we've got, um, oh, there is another, um, I, I was like, there's, there's another bag. Um, oh, so much fun. Okay, um, so it looks like, I'm like getting too excited and getting ahead of myself. Um, and I'm trying not to read. So I think that we might not have, okay, I may have been wrong with the Angora, but let's look at our fiber. So how much is in here? Whoa, this is pretty. This is a, I would say it's like a heathered gray. Um, it is extremely soft and it looks like that this is a um, lofty and lightweight combed top that's 85% natural shades of blue face luster wool and 15 percent wild tussa silk top we named this naturally cloudy gray blend downy downpour because it's reminiscent of the rainy spring day that in the form of soft fluff which has promptly i got some in my mouth <laughs> you'll love how effortlessly it spins and dies a bfl silk blend is actually probably one of my favorite blends to spin um it's eight ounces. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you weighed it because it wasn't on the card. Yeah. I mean, it, it feels like that there is a lot. Um, it is really, really, really soft. Um, that is so excited. Okay. So then we've got our bunny notions bag right here. So let's see what we have and then we'll read. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is so cool. Okay. So this little like pom pom, for a pom-pom thing is very um I've never seen one like this look at all those colors it actually really does look like it was tipped with kool-aid it's got uh like pink orange and yellow and like is very I think it's getting a little blown out so it's got a white base and then there are fluffy tips let's see what else we've got in here we've got ooh some stash tea this is where the sweet Oh, actually the sweet scent probably was coming from the Kool-Aid. I'm surprised I didn't immediately recognize the scent. Um, so the, we've got some stash tea and sunny orange ginger. <laughs> Look at that. Poor Eunice, is she a peep? Um, an iconic marshmallow holiday version of Eunice as a yellow sheep peep. Okay, so there there actually isn't really a pun, but the sticker is super, super cute. Super cute. And we've got some Kool-Aid. I have a feeling that the um, flavors of Kool-Aid uh, that uh, come in are probably random, but let me see. Okay, so they're saying two packs is more than enough to speckle. Five packs should fully saturate. Four ounces of roving when over dying. Um, yep, and they, they say, I mean, they say that you need vinegar, uh, little bowls, plastic, a microwave or steamer. And a quarter cup of vinegar per four ounces of fiber. Yeah, that's like, that's a reasonable, that's a reasonable amount. Although actually, you don't really... I guess to speckle, you may want some vinegar, but with Kool-Aid, you don't necessarily need the vinegar because there is citric acid in the packets. But for, to get, sh since this has, is a silk blend, you may want more acid, especially if you're going for something that is more splotched and specked. Uh, let's see, let it soak, remove fiber, fold it. Okay, yep. Trace of tools. I would say these instructions look really good. I don't have a shout out in this box, um, but I am really, really excited. Uh, if you are new and watching, I got my start 
dyeing yarn with Kool-Aid. Uh, I had a lot of uh, a wool acrylic blend that was in white left over from a sampler afghan where I was trying to teach myself how to knit cables and or I successfully taught myself to knit cables and so I didn't want that much extra white yarn. I looked online, ran to the grocery store, grabbed some Kool-Aid packets and then the rest is history. Uh, and so here we are today. Um, and it is really, really fun. I don't, I've dyed wool silk blend roving before. I don't know if I've done it with Kool-Aid. Certainly, I'm gonna have to try to fit this in the schedule. And actually, I think I have a lab partner. Okay, honey, mommy's live right now. You know, you could go use mommy's. Fine. Okay. Okay. Um, anyway. <laughs> Hashtag mom life. Uh, the, yeah, so I'm not sure if I've tried a silk blend with Kool-Aid before. Um, but I think that it would work beautifully. And so, uh, yeah. And if, if any of you are, are curious, um, I am like, why I was like, ooh, I wonder if I could have a shout out in here is because I have received shout outs to my dyeing process a few times uh, in these. And I'm not like disappointed or anything, uh, but it's always when it's happened been a surprise. And so I was like, could it be? <laughs> um, ooh, roll Carter. Yeah, I hope. I need, we've got space constraints. That is the uh, big concern. But so I happen to have other flavors in my account, The in my, or in, I think I have other, still have other flavors in my stash because I'm tempted to go for some of these sunset colors that are on this little rainbow, like dude. Although Lucas might actually want that on something. But actually these are some of the rarest flavors to find. There is, if you're in the Boston area, the, the, is it a, I don't even know if it's Star or Shaw's anymore. I'm blanking, but in, on um, VFW Parkway in Dedham, they usually have a rainbow of Kool-Aid. Not that I've been there in over a year at this point, but that is a good source for Kool-Aid. Um, does Kool-Aid keep the colors after it washes? You're knitting a hat you dyed with Kool-Aid to see if the color stays. Yes, I do have a video. I don't know if it was Kool-Aid or food coloring dyed yarn though, um, but I do have a video where I made a swatch out of some yarn that I was knitting. I'm gonna take this off because it's hurting. Uh, I knit a swatch and then I put it in the washing machine in the video. And, excuse me, the food coloring can be very wash fast. It isn't always super light. Yes, hi Indy, you know I'm doing Paradise Fibers. Um, it isn't always super light fast. So I wouldn't recommend drying your wet yarn or fiber or garments out on a clothesline in the in full sun. Uh, oh, Indy, the uh, fading that I've seen happen has been, especially with wet on a short time scale or when I made like a little butterfly and I left it on my windowsill for months. And then I was like, oh, that faded. But my winter hat uh, that I did dye with Kool-Aid, let me see if I can grab it. So this hat was knit with the first ever wool, 100% wool yarn I ever dyed with Kool-Aid and food coloring. And I would say that it's looking way less saturated on camera than it does in person. Um, so this is about a decade old. There has been some amount of fading from like the inside to the outside, uh, but I wear this all the time in the winter. It does get wet in the snow. Uh, and it is still very, very vibrant. Let's see, there we go. You can see a little better if I go closer, the vibrant color. So, um, 
if you're going to sell, <laughs> hi Andy, if you're going to sell, set up a shop and sell yarn, then I might recommend that you look into commercial dyes. But I think that food coloring is a, and Kool-Aid are a really, really fun way to get started with the yarn and roving dyeing process. And um, it's really fun to do with kids as well. Uh, so where I used to get blue raspberry and I think green apple was on eBay. That was one of the cheapest sources I found for it before I found it in person. So the thing is with Kool-Aid is that when you can find it in a store, usually it's about three for a, three packets for a dollar. Sometimes they'll be on sale for four for a dollar, but usually 33 cents is what you should expect for one packet. Uh, if you try to shop for them on Amazon or something, there will be a huge markup. If you cannot find Kool-Aid and you want to play with those projects, you can substitute pretty much any artificial food coloring and vinegar for that. Uh, with speckles, Kool-Aid is unique because it is a dry powder, but I have some videos on this channel on how you can make your own sugar sprinkles, which or even citric acid sprinkles, which would be very, very similar to what you have with Kool-Aid uh, by using a couple drops of your liquid food coloring and the citric acid or sugar powder, stirring it up, letting it dry a little bit, and then you can use that for speckling. Uh, so there is that. So will blues and greens dye the heather gray well? Um, so when you're over dyeing a gray, the colors will always be a bit more muted than they would be if you were dyeing just a bare yarn that's off white or even a bleached, a white, a pure white yarn. Um, but uh, this is a very like pale gray. Let me see. I'm like, I think I have my diamond. Okay, so here is my Paradise Fibers Diamond Sock Blend that is got Angelina in it. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with it yet, um, but this is one. I don't think the, the lighting isn't great, but so this is like a bare white, a standard white. And so here is the gray, which I cannot see my monitor. So they are very, very close. When it comes to speckles, it might not make a huge difference, but actually in a lot of my videos, I've dyed um, a lot of full circle roving I had, I think was a co color similar to this. So I've dyed that kind of color um, in a number of videos. And so it depends on how much dye you use, but yes, you, you should be able to see it. Lemonade is pretty pastel. So that one might be a little harder to see. Yay, I'm glad. Yeah, I try, I, I'm not always good about it. I try to like post an update to my Instagram stories uh, before doing an unboxing when I can. Um, but a lot of times I film things fairly last minute, fairly last minute. But yeah, I'm really excited. And I imagine that this will uh, have to be a Dye Pot Weekly in the not too distant future. And so I am very, very excited about that. Uh, and I think that calling it sweet speckles is just adorable, absolutely adorable. Um, and then we've got some info about the, um, uh, the BFL in here. And another thing that's really fun is, so they have some pictures of some of the stuff that they did and I think that the the spun the spun yarn that had some of those blue speckles is just really really fun with the gray base. Yeah, I'm excited to see what I'm going to do with it too. Um, I I as I said, I love 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 um, a BFL blend. I think that and if you're nervous about like touching it too much as you're dyeing and potentially felting it. If you're planning to do a more speckled based technique on this, which don't forget if you speckle on, then um, like things will blend as you're spinning. 
but if you if you want to try that you could have it you could sort of braid it up first i don't think as i'm trying to there we go i don't think this looks like it was dyed in the braid but you can do that and it's a way that sometimes i feel a little less nervous about going too far uh, so that's just something i wanted to point out but actually i think i have a video Uh huh. Okay, so I have this video. So this is from 2016. This is pre Dye Pot Weekly. But I took some roving, and yep, this was Knit Picks Full Circle. And so you can see that this is a very oatmeal gray. I would say that it's not as, that the, that this BFL silk is a little darker, but just a hair just a hair um and so i with this i think this was the first time i tried something like this i took i i pre-soaked it and i laid it out and i just sort of sprinkled the dry powder on uh and so that was really really fun and i don't want to and then i microwaved it probably and aha Going to show an ad. I'll come back. Oh, I'll come back when the ad is done. Oh no, it didn't. Fine, 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 fine. Um, of course, I ch picked a blurry. No, no ad, Rebecca. There you go. <laughs> um. And so here you can see that I did a splotchy uh, color application. And I think, I don't remember if I did a video. I'm, I'll find, I'll find where I did that. Uh -huh. Did I do a video for the spinning? did. I did do videos. Okay. So I spun I spun it in two ways. So in one I sort of gradient spun and then I chain plied it so we had it transition and the other I didn't do it as a gradient. Um, I sort of did it as, I just did a color repeat uh, over and over. And so that one I did less of. And so this, there weren't a lot of repeats. I think I just did a couple, but um, it had some repeats of it. And you can see, I believe that I chain plied this as well. Um, and I think I went, I did a thicker spin on this one. And where, so here's the, here's some close-up pictures of the yarn that I did with Kool-Aid on a very similar roving. So I think I did one packet of each color. And on here you can see that the yellow didn't really show up very much. But I think that I saw on an old website that one packet of lemonade Kool-Aid, so one of just the yellow, is like one drop of yellow food coloring, whereas one packet of cherry is like 40 drops. So there's a huge difference in the pigmentation. But the blue raspberry, if you, instead of spreading it over a big area, if you really concentrate it in smaller areas, you'll get a nice punch of color from it. Oh! And this shows the, okay, so that's the fiber. And then this is how I did different um, kinds of drafting. I haven't done, I thought that with the pandemic and stuff, I was gonna do more spinning videos. And then that didn't quite end up that way. Um, the only other thing I wanted to find is, 
haven't updated my blog in a really long time. <laughs> it's been a while. Search this blog. Um, oh, was it technically a... Did I make up? Yeah. Okay, so this was a pattern that I wrote way, way back before. Um, this was <laughs> November 2nd, just so uh, that I published this. So just so the date um, <laughs> is out there. But I knit this with the yarn. And I actually was going to knit it with just the rainbow and do like a square hat because I thought it would be adorable. This is Ryder, has a little baby. Um, but I didn't have enough to finish the hat that I wanted to do. So then I took the second yarn and held it with, I think, some Tough Puff in white. Oh yeah, here you can see when I was gonna run out. And so I did the tough, I held the strands together to give that cloud and then use the little bits that I had left to make the pom-poms. And I mean, how adorable, how adorable. <laughs> that little guy is five now, I can't believe it. So. Anyway, that is a bit of a tangent, but a relevant tangent because it is relevant to the dying project that is in this month's Paradise Fibers Fiber of the Month Club. Now, uh, where is, um, so if you are interested in getting this box, and I believe, I forget when the cutoff is, if it's the 10th, um, I am just dropping my affiliate link into the chat again. Uh, this, you can sign up and send them a note and say that you want the April one as your first month. Um, and so, or you obviously you don't have to, you can go and wait at the end of the month, they will be dropping more of this fiber. So the way that, they release new blends and new fibers is that club members often will get the first dibs at it. So if you're a club member and you're like eight ounces isn't enough, I want more. Uh, as a club member, you can save 10% off all full priced fiber purchases. And so before it's even listed, you can email them or call to order more. Uh, so that way you get like first dibs at it, if that, if that makes sense, um, which is something I was, I took advantage of for the diamond because yeah, I, I wonder, I, I don't know what I did with my original that came, my four ounces, I think that came in my box, but I have that and I'm, yeah, I haven't decided what I'm going to do with it. So, oh, <laughs> Will I link the video? Oh, I can link the videos right now. Um, I will do my best. I have all these videos open. So yes, I will link them. And if I don't, please ask me to, and I will. I'll, I'll add them in the pinned comment. Um, yeah. <laughs> As I am all over the place. Uh, yeah. It's been a hectic, hectic week. Indy got really, really ill, but he's on the mend. Uh, and yeah, Lucas started like five days a week in person school, but Ryder, but they both had still had weird schedules because there's teacher conferences and Ryder's coming off of spring break. And so it's been a very hectic week. And so but tomorrow is, I guess, the first day they both have a full day of school uh, with the new schedule. And so I'm very excited for that. And uh, I am, a so the, the, the Easter egg dying video, I hope to get a recap up um, maybe by Saturday for that live stream. I had wanted to do that by today, but uh, I got my uh, first COVID vaccine yesterday, 
and then I was really, really tired. So I did not uh, film that yesterday afternoon or this morning. Um, I'm feeling fine. I have a fatigue disorder anyway, so it was not unexpected. Like, for, I get tired from other vaccines and stuff, so I don't know if it's from that or if it was just relief. Um, but I'm feeling great. And yeah, so that just delayed <laughs> my schedule a bit. But I, I do have an episode of Dipot Weekly ready to go for tomorrow morning. And I am very excited to be able to uh, film again uh, this weekend and next week. Because with writer Spring Break and then all the like schedule wildness writer was, didn't have like in-person school until Wednesday, this week was was hard. <laughs> and thank you. I am very, very relieved um, and happy because now I'm like, I think I, in about five weeks I can hug my dad. And so if you've been following a lot of stuff, I have been wanting to hug him for a long time anyway, but there's a hug my dad has needed uh, since January. And so I, we've got a has got a countdown and I am very, very happy about that. But, oh man, I am excited. And yeah, I, I mean, what's weird is with both, with Lucas not being in hybrid, with B Lucas being in person now, like I can shift to a more, well, he's got, next week will be a normal week. And then Lucas has spring break. <laughs> so in May, <laughs> We'll have like a couple, I'll have a couple months before summer where it's going to feel like normal and I might be able to kind of pull back from mostly weekend filming, which I'm very excited about, which means that we can do more like hikes and other kinds of stuff that we like to do. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, Keith's not eligible for another couple weeks, but, uh, and then, yeah. We just have to wait on uh, the kids, but my parents should be getting their second doses next week, I think. And my brother's getting his, and so, uh, oh, it's blurry. But yeah, it's, uh, uh, I'm tired. And then I, well, today I was really tired, and then I realized that I didn't have any caffeine this morning, so that I was like, oh, that compounded the, my like fatigue. I was like halfway through the day. I'm like, oh, I didn't have any caffeine yet. <laughs> I think someone should dye a homemade soft blank with hard boiled eggs inside and show both. Do you mean like tie it up with hard boiled eggs inside? Because for a second I was like, huh? But I mean, I think using like shibori type stuff with tying fabric around different objects to get the different kinds of resists, there's something interesting about that. I'd be a little nervous about an egg breaking, but the overall like theory of it is very interesting to me. Yes, but you know, I can, oh my gosh, like, dreaming about being able to go to like yarny type events and then maybe I can meet some of you guys and actually give real hugs. Um, I'm a, probably a little awkward in person. <laughs> but yeah, hugs, hugs to everyone. I, yeah, I, I'm just a little all over the place with all the like shifts and each time we have a big transition, it just feels weird but I only I only became eligible for the vaccine on Monday and Tuesday morning I had an appointment that I was able to schedule for Wednesday so that was like really awesome um I thought it was gonna take longer and so I think the timing actually works out uh so that is that is good uh but yeah, I have so many videos I want to film and I have so much stuff I need to edit. And, ooh, I dyed the, like, 
the add-on for the summer sets and uh, I'm very happy with it and I don't know it's fun I like doing the developing colorway videos because then I like I share self-doubt and I second guess myself but ultimately I end up really excited with where it goes and so I think that's fun but anyway I am digressing a lot but it was really fun that I happened to have a video or a set of videos that were relevant with roving that also was a similar like non-white this fiber is amazing it is absolutely amazing i want more i want more and the little bit of heathering in it is just so pretty and it is so soft um yes you just missed uh so the theme for april is sweet speckles and came with Kool-Aid and eight ounces of an 85% uh, BFL, 15% Tessa Silk blend. But the replay will be up and it there is technically DVR stuff. So I think even during the stream, you can like go back and sort of look through the beginning. But then I did a digression and showed off uh, some uh, Kool-Aid on roving project that is fairly similar. So uh, that was a my, my digression for the evening. <laughs> I love, Indy doesn't come and join for every live stream, but he really knows about the Paradise Fibers ones. I think that he likes the smelling of it. <laughs> yeah, this, I mean, I'm very excited. These are the rarest colors of Kool-Aid you can get. I mean, I think that Blue raspberry used to be called ice blue raspberry lemonade, but except for like a mystery color that there was at one point, I don't think that there's another blue. There is green apple and lemon lime, which I don't think I've compared side by side, but they're extremely similar. Um, but so those are the rarest. I suppose yellows and orange are pretty rare as well. There's the most like red and pink kind of family. Ooh, a bigger electric spinning wheel. That sounds awesome man i yeah i oh my gosh well right now i'm working on my sweater which is going well i am uh approaching the end of the body and then can start the sleeves hello everyone uh oh so what i oh i can't shift things while i am in the live stream. I'm working on getting like smoother transitioning things. <laughs> you got acid dyes and some fair yarn today. Yay! Oh, I'm so glad that I could like give courage and encouragement or whatever people need to play with color. Uh, and hopefully uh, it helps to see me make mistakes and I mean, I'm usually not disappointed. Occasionally I'm disappointed and nervous and unsure, but I think that showing that helps just, I know it helps me because just to share that, but actually, well, there's a reason why I can't turn the camera around that way. I've got all kinds of stuff all over the place. Hey, Indy, do you want to say hello? Indy, up, Indy, up. No, you, they can't see you. You're too short. I know. I'm not actually going to pick you up right now, though, because I don't want to make you sick. Sorry, he's not tall enough. <laughs> but it is um, shedding season. Oy. Hi, I'm glad you're feeling better. And he's very happy because he gets chicken. So anyway, all right. I, I think I am going to sign off and feed this. <laughs> he knows. He knows. You're waiting for your bear yarn too. You want the grandkids to help you using tie-dye? Yeah, Kit. Oh, uh, I was much more nervous the one time I had Lucas use tie-dye um, with dyeing yarn, but I think he was only like four or five at the time. Uh, but uh, yeah, he wants to do another squirt gun yarn dyeing video. Uh, 
So if, if it's possible to do it outside, I would do it outside just because the only thing that made me nervous was mess. I think we gave the kids, um, we gave the tie dye to them in cups with foam brushes and let them apply it that way versus giving them the squeeze bottles because I envisioned just like a big squeeze, but it depends on how old your grandkids are. So can you dye in disposable aluminum pans? I don't recommend it uh, because eventually acid does sort of eat away at the aluminum and they develop holes. And so you don't, they're not strong enough to say put directly on a stovetop. Now what I do like those aluminum pans for is I will use them to put hot yarn in that I take out of the, the out of a dye pot and I put it in there until it cools because I don't want to put it straight in a plastic bin because I'm afraid that that bin would melt. So that's what I use the aluminum things for the most. Oh, 13 and 14? Oh, okay. So anywhere you're comfortable with. Um, that's old enough that you can uh, trust them to have some amount of control. Uh, but I think I used a big, like, at the time, like a big plastic. Well, I use shower curtains as like a tablecloth. But yeah, I would use like a big plastic tablecloth or something and have fun. So I do have one video that I did dye in a disposable aluminum pan. But overall, I would say that like, if you could find a different container, I would recommend a different container just because of the concern of them failing. But uh, yeah, I mean, I used, the time I used it, I used it inside my bigger catering steam pan. So if it failed, then it wasn't gonna cause a big problem because there was liquid underneath. Um, uh, tie-dye, um, it should be pretty color fast. Uh, what type of fiber are you dyeing? So if you're doing cotton, so the one time I did tie-dye with kids on yarn was because one of the kids was allergic to wool and so therefore I wanted him to be able to dye yarn that could be used in something that he could wear. Uh, otherwise I would have done food coloring, but you can't do food coloring with cotton. Uh, so that's why I did that. But I have used tie-dye on wool uh, Excuse me. And so I've had some decent results. If you search the channel for like tulip tie dye, then a lot of videos come up. Um, so Bill, yeah. So I, I mean, I've, I've definitely done like a wool nylon sock blend with tie dye. Uh, um, I think an enamel covered roasting pan should be pretty fine. Uh, just, um, and Kathleen, if you're doing, um, if you're dying with food coloring, I would be okay using my roasting pan, but if you are going to be dying with acid dyes, I would want to get something else that is just dedicated for dyeing yarn. Uh, because once I have a pan that I use with commercial dyes, uh, I don't then use that for food after the fact. Oh, excuse me one sec. Yes, sweetie. Okay, I'm almost done, all right? So just hold tight. <laughs> um, Indy, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Thank you. Yes, I'm, I'm right here. It's okay. Uh, yeah, so just, just make sure, um, just make sure that whatever you're using with commercial dyes is dedicated for dyeing yarn and you don't also use it for food because you just don't want to for any reason accidentally like ingest anything uh, but i am personally comfortable using cooking pots and pans and things like that with um, dyeing fiber with kool-aid or other food coloring and other food safe things but for natural dyes given that like you know so even with natural dyes i use dedicated dye stuff i suppose unless it's actually uh if I'm not using a mordant and if the natural dye I'm using is a supermarket ingredient, uh, like when I did beets or red cabbage, then I use cooking pots and pans, but because that was basically food. So I hope that that helps and I hope that you guys are excited for some more. I, I mean, I can't help myself. We've got to do some more Kool-Aid videos coming up. It's been a while since I brought up the Kool-Aid. 
I'm excited. I'm very excited. So anyway, I want to give another huge, huge, huge thank you to Paradise Fibers. To Paradise Fibers for sending me the Fiber of the Month Club. Every month they have a really fun surprise and a fun theme. And just like the care and everything that goes into it is just so fun. And I really, really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Uh, yeah, and so again, um, I am an affiliate. They sent me this for free to share. And yeah, but I always will give my own opinions and thoughts. And yeah, I think that the written instructions that they included are, are really good. I will probably do my own protocol when I do it. But uh, I think that you know, and again, you don't have to use vinegar when you're do using um, Kool-Aid, but it can help if you want things to strike quickly. So uh, pre-soaking with some acid can always help um, and usually wouldn't hurt in any kind of way. Oh, and again, rarely they do include some scents some sense in the uh, fiber of the month. <laughs> Everyone's trying to talk to me at once. Um, every once in a while they do include scents. So if you would like a scent free uh, subscription, uh, just reach out to customer service and make that request. And I'm very, very sure that they can accommodate that. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned. Oh, subscribe and all of that information. Give thumbs up. All that really, really helps the channel. And tomorrow morning, there will be another acrylic yarn dyeing video uh, as we have a new episode of Dye Put Weekly. And so that'll be out at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. And so I really hope you will enjoy it. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Bye. Ha ha. And so. I, I just need to get it set up so that way I can have an end thing so that I know when to stop. <laughs> I'm getting there. I promise. All right. Bye, everyone. <laughs>